welcome to PMLDC. I'm your host, Admin Joe, and along with me is co-host, Admin Dusty. Hello. Alright guys, this is week 7, so we're going to go over a few things about that. Of course, this is the last week, and here on the board, you can see who's going to the playoffs and who is sitting at home for the rest of the season. So for the Canto side, we have first place, PSG, uh, ran by uh, Paul Richardson. Then uh, second place, we have Richard Smith with the Toros. And then third place, yours truly, Charles Triots, made it with the 4-3. and three. Thanks to Richard beating out the New Zealand Kings for me. And Dusty, tell us who made it over there on the Alolan side. Just one second. Okay. On the Alolan side, it looks like the first place goes to the Rapid Dashes, with uh, Reginald leading those guys, of course. Um, second place looks like it went to the Gators, what I'm showing here. And actually, I'm not sure, um, did Matt and Morgan have their battle? Matt and Morgan did have their battle. As y'all can see, we had a two-way tie for third place in the Lowland Division. And go check that out. We had them do a metronome battle to decide the victor, and Morgan was the winner. Nice. So that was a fun little thing to see. I didn't think we would be able to see uh, that this season. I thought it was going to be more locked in on who was going to go, but that shows how competitive this league is being. Right. I liked it too. All right. Well, so we're not going to go over the other differentials now because th that's the main important part about it. But we will go over each game. Um, the first game we have here is uh, Chargers versus PSG. My game, of course. Um, I put that I played well, but I had nothing for that line noon. And he had great prep to set up the line noon with that Pukamuku. Yeah, that's what I had too. That The game was pretty good until he got that uh, belly drum off. Yeah. Then uh, he was also telling me that extreme speed, no matter what kind of priority you have, it wasn't going to out outspeed it. Yeah. And no one on my team gets extreme speed, so... Yeah, I was screwed at that point on. Yeah, the only thing you could have done was, like, switch somebody and that couldn't be hit by it. Like, you would have had a ghost or something. Yeah, well, I was really banking on that Magmar flame body like I did against uh, the Tyroars. Mm -hmm. But, sadly, it didn't work out and I lost. <laughs> but, uh, what were your view on the game other than that? Um, I enjoyed how you guys had Ultra Beast versus Ultra Beast and then Mega versus Mega. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was really relying on Zerkatru to win me that game, but due to the Light Noon setup, it didn't get the chance to. No. But um, for the next game, we actually had Blades versus Gators. And I didn't have much on this game, just to the fact that both teams played very well. And um, the main thing I had was the Blades had amazing switch-ins, and the Gator made two bad plays that probably cost him the game. Well, I noticed that um, Blade sent in Como o against Gallade, and it got smoked. So I was wondering if he was, like, sacrificing that so he could send something else in later, but I just wasn't sure why Blades sent in Como o against Gallade. Yeah, it seemed like he was trying to use it as death fodder at that point, but... But the last Pokemon standing was in the red, so it was a very close game. Oh, yeah, and it's one of those games that you like where they use all six Pokemon. Mm-hmm. My thing was, um, I don't understand why the Gators tried to lock themselves into clinging skills knowing that uh, Matt still had a fairy type on this side. Yeah, that... <laughs> that... It was something that crossed my mind too. I was, I really wasn't sure. I was think he was hoping that, and I don't know. I'm kidding. <laughs> I can't figure that I, out either. I mean, I do know that uh, Koma O can have Iron Head, but he would, yeah, locked himself into the wrong move. Yeah, so that that's I think that screwed him over at the beginning, and then more towards the end, he tried to gunshot do Blade for some reason. 
Yeah, I saw that too. And uh, I remember in the chat he said misclick, so I'm assuming that's what that was. But yeah, that that didn't make sense to me either. Yeah, costly misclick. <laughs> yeah, anything else on that game? Not much, no. No, all right. Let's go ahead and move on over to the Minioars versus Tyroars. Another game that had every Pokemon in play. Yeah, it was a very good ge- very good week this week for competitive wise. Uh, the only notes I really had is that they both had really good switch outs. Um, I noticed that the uh, Tyroars brought two weather conditioning Pokemon. Was it them or yeah, they brought Politoed and. They had Sandstream on Tyranitar, so I wasn't sure. Yeah. He was just banking to utilize those somehow. And then uh, I loved that it was a Destiny Bond win. Uh, Frost last got the Destiny Bond on uh, the Tyroar's last Pokemon. Oh, yeah. That that was one of my favorite parts, too. Um, I also liked uh, he had the moveset on Houndoom to be able to fight through the weather, even though it was raining. He didn't need yeah. to rely on fire to take out pulse. those three months. And uh, he made an amazing Z-move play on that Politoed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. Uh, but um, I did like the attempt at bringing the rain. It it did some work, but it wasn't enough to actually do enough. Yeah. It got close, though. I mean, it was a close game. Yeah, and it was also interesting to see a normal type Savali. Yeah. So I wonder what item he actually had on that. But not not much do you see normal type Savali. They always put that drive on it. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're going to go ahead and go to um, the Rapidash versus Clones. And this was, uh, this was partially a playoff considering game. And, I mean, if Jirachi Close would have won, they would have made the playoffs instead of having that tiebreaker between Matt and Morgan. Yep. But uh, going up against the top team in the on, in the Alola side, probably in the whole league, uh, it wasn't in his favor. Not at all. Uh, I noticed he, he did try to... Um, he did try to set up with that Vivillion early, but he brought a subset on Naganado. Yeah, I noticed that. So that was great prep, knowing exactly what uh, clones would bring. And, uh, I mean... Now we saw that strategy almost every game from the clones, though. Yeah, so I was going to say, Michael Bloom pretty much brought the same set, same team. that, And he was very predictable in the sense, and he should have tried to switch it up going up against uh, Reginald. Knowing that he needed this win to make the playoffs. His Naganadel has been prepped perfectly in like every game. Oh yeah, and I love the bulk he had on that Vaporeon to take on the Sand Team. That thing took out both of his Sand Pokemon in one swoop, just scalding them. He was able to get a Scald on that Hippowdon, take it out, or Hippopotas, and take it out. And then uh, Excadrill came in, it took an Earthquake Life Orb hit, and then scalded that and killed it. Yeah, he had a bulky Vaporeon. Yeah, and it it helped, big time. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it about that game. He he just had all control throughout the whole game, and Jirachi Clones couldn't do much. But, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to Knights versus Titars, and I actually had the most notes on this game. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was surprised that uh, it only went to two zero for the T Tars. Um, he predicted my switches really well. Like he switched in perfectly. Yeah, he he did some good job on that. He did a good job selling out your Min Shao when you were setting up with it. Yeah. Uh, he got, he killed three of mine before I even got a kill on him. So my last three put in a bit of work. Oh yeah, and I also feel like he uh he was kind of rushing at the end, like he wasn't really thinking off his plays, cause um towards the end when uh Snorlax got burned and uh, you were already setting up with uh Slowbro at the end, he could have uh switched to Aegislash sooner, probably got a Toxic off, and mm-hmm. got that 
got that down so he could have brought back the Age of Slash and then killed it off with uh, Facade or something later. And also, uh, he misplayed on your uh, Drapion with the Snorlax. He went Facade Earthquake when mm-hmm. he could have just went Facade Facade and killed it in two hits. Yeah, I actually made that Drapion just for his battle. I noticed that um, all of his Pokemon are physical fighters, and Drapion has really good defense, so I just brought a new Drapion for attack and defense. Yeah. I mean, that burn really helped it on the facade. Like I said, it could have two, ki- two killed it, but it didn't make sense why he won Earthquake. I guess he forgot he was, I was burned. I was sad. Uh... I had a scarf tied dragon, but I forgot about Stoutland's ability in the sandstorm. Made it faster anyway. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 I, it, well, it wasn't that it was faster. You you hit it with Dark Pulse, and it lived on one. Did it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and uh, did you bring priority on any of your Pokemon? Uh, mine, no. Uh, mine show had fake out. But I think she might have been dead at that point. I can't remember. Oh, well, I meant like on, uh, you didn't bring Sucker Punch on Drapion? Uh, no, no. I gave him Knock Off instead. Ah, uh, see, th- that's where I was like, I didn't understand the explosion play on that, uh, Cloister. Oh, like yeah. I was a bit surprised explosion. by it, too. I guess the main thing he was worried about was maybe that Sucker Punch. But he could have just swept from there. But, oh well, missed priorities. I mean, you had good text on the Mian Shao, and you did a pretty smart job of not high jump kicking on Snorlax, because that's when he switched out to Age of Slash. Yeah. But, um, other than that, it was a nice game. All Pokemon made a showing and actually pulled some work on. And, uh, that's, we, oh yeah, we have one more game. It was, uh... Kings versus Toros, which I would think was the game of the week. Just from uh, the big play his Altaria made. Yeah, I actually added quite a few notes. Uh, they both got off a lot of like field hazards. Uh, toxic spikes and stealth rocks, and stealth rocks and sticky web for each side. Like, um, Incineroar got the knockoff on Swampert's leftovers really early. Um... I was just like, oh no, because that uh, Swampert's actually been putting a lot of work in for the Tauros. Yeah, and it still actually did some work, even though I got the leftovers knocked off. I, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I have in bold letters, like all capitalized, Altaria Hayes with a smiley face. So. Uh, yes, this, this is the part I was talking about. Um, That's when, uh, what's his name? Duo, not Duosian, Reuniclus. Oh, yeah. He had acid armor. He had armors. iron. Def- yeah, he bumped that thing's defense with Calm Mind and acid armor. Yeah, he had acid armors and all that, and he was just setting up, setting up. And at that point, I was just like, oh, well, there goes my playoff hopes. And <laughs> whenever I just saw him kill two Pokemon and then Altaria come out and just haze, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> People underestimate how, how game changing one haze can be. Oh, yeah, especially whenever he was set up the way he was. He was plus three in special attack, special defense, and plus four in defense. Mm-hmm. So that took away all his momentum, and that's what cost him the game at that point. Uh, I put the that the Kings took a, took charge early, making great plays. But uh, after the haze, he lost all the momentum. And uh, clearly... I put maybe if he brought Trick Room, but then he would probably miss one of those set up with the Acid Armors. So, I mean, he did good, but you can't have a perfect game every game. And then uh, I also put that uh, Cartana did a great job getting up the SD to finish it off at the end. Yeah. But that's all the week's games. Uh, Yell and the Yell from the Bold Grand Bulls and the Polyrass actually did get their game done, but it was late, so I got it. They gave it to me like last night, I believe. So uh, I will be I will be putting that video up 
uh, when I get the chance, but it's not up yet, so we have nothing to talk about for that. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our PML Single Draft League's kill leaders for the season, since the season's already over, regular season-wise. Uh, we have Naganadel in first place with 15 kills, Cartana in second place with 12 kills. That's, uh, that's Nahaligo. Nahaligo? Yeah, that's what I said, right? I put, oh, I said Naganadel, right? Yeah. Sorry. Nihaligo with 15 kills. Cartana with 12. Uh, Scizor with 11. And Dragonite with 11 tied for third. So as you can see, those are the top four kill leaders of the season. And obviously, they have the best chance of making it to the all-star teams. Now, if you don't remember what all-star teams is about, um, basically, some of the best, some of the Coaches that got voted are going to use the best Pokemon killers in the league and pit them against each other six versus six. And basically like a Pro Bowl style game. So it'd be an all-star game for us. So the, that's the kill leaders for the season though. These four right here. Anything to say, Dusty? No, we pretty much expected these guys. We've watched them hold on to those spots pretty much throughout the whole whole thing. Yeah, I was actually surprised that Cartana actually snuck in at the end and got those three kills and boosted them all the way to 12 and got him to second place. But let's go ahead and move on to our PML Singles Coach of the Year. Uh, that is Stuart. Uh, he got voted in by uh, his peers in the draft league, and he was voted number one for coach of the year. So congratulations to Stewart. He was, yeah, a lot of us were rooting for him the whole time. Yeah, he was at uh, coach of the Kings, so you can see he was just that one game shy away from the playoffs. But uh, we'll go ahead and continue on to our Alolan All Stars. This is the team the Alolan coach will be using. It's uh, Naganadel, Dragonite, Mega Metagross, Swallow, Ditto, and Infernate. So we got a couple of Mons from uh, two coaches. And then we have Mega Metagross from the... Tyranitars and Swallow from Dusty's team, the Knights. And of course, that Ditto made it. It was killing things all year long. Yeah, it was. And uh, for the Kanto side, we have Nihilego, Cartana, Mega Scizor, Linoon, Lycanroc Dusk, and Mega Mawile. So. He has a choice to use Mega Scizor or Mega Mawile, and he can use the regular form of whichever he prefers to use. And for that's for the Kantos coach to decide. And that's pretty much it for this week's recap. Yeah, it was pretty sweet and to the point. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we'll see y'all next time on PMLDC.